yesterday in Jordan Hare. Final score, Auburn 20, Georgia 27. And this is one that hurts a little bit. Hugh Freeze talked about it in his post-game press conference. He's like, yeah, I hurt internally. We hurt in that locker room. Like, that's a team that had the national champs on the ropes and just came up a little bit short. Had had the ball with, you know, a chance to go and tie the game, did Auburn. They were very much in this game. And it hurts. But even so, man, while it hurts today, I think you got to give yourself that 24-hour rule. Let the emotions kind of go throughout your body and kind of flush them out after that 24 hours is up and look ahead for Auburn and say, okay, hey, it's Hugh Freeze's first year. If this is a sign of what's to come under Hugh Freeze, and I think it is, this Auburn football team's headed the right direction. So we'll unpack that right now, but really quickly, Auburn fans had a lot of y'all join the party recently. Make sure you're dialed in right here, okay? Make sure you're subscribed to the On Their YouTube channel. College football, nothing but college football here every single day, live three times a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, at JD Pacal. Going to keep you in the know for all things as it pertains to this show. And just make sure that we keep y'all in the loop for when we are going live, what we're talking about, all that good stuff. So thank you in advance for that. This was a game now where it kind of clicked a little bit, I think, if you had any questions about Hugh Freeze as your head coach and about the staff that he assembled. Because Hugh Freeze, man... <clears throat> He schemed it up against Georgia. Like, we just got to kind of be real here on Tell the Truth Sunday. Like, he schemed it up. He had the national champs, back-to-back national champs, mind you, with a defensive-minded head coach with 70% of the production from that Georgia football team from last year back defensively. Had him on their heels, man. Ran for over 200 yards, five yards a carry. Only threw for 82, excuse me, only threw for 88. But still, you look at this team, you look at what they were able to do yesterday, and they were able to just throw haymakers at Georgia. And it was a team that was playing with house money to a degree, but like at the end of the day, like there was so much that you took away from this team, from this performance, that you got to feel good about going forward now, man. And there's no moral victories. I understand that. Nobody here is feeling better because they covered the spread or because they gave the the home fans a good showing. Like, nobody's happy about that. I understand that. That's not what you play for. You play to win football games. Shout out Herm Edwards. But at the end of the day, what they were able to do in that read option game, they gave Georgia fits. They were playing with the second level of that defense. They were out leveraging the linebackers. They were wrapping around and blocking for Peyton Thorne. Peyton Thorne now showed off the wheels. Kirby Smart tried to tell us during the week, like, yeah, they, they got two really good athletes playing quarterback, Robbie Ashford and Peyton Thorne. Peyton Thorne showed the, uh, looks like 90 overall speed if we're using Madden ratings. Like, he, he, was, he was out the back door quick, fast, and in a hurry with what he did in that read option game. Like, you got to feel encouraged about what he was for you as your quarterback yesterday in that spot. I walked away from this game. Did Peyton Thorne play perfect? Absolutely not. There was a lot to take away that you did not like from Peyton Thorne's performance yesterday. That last drive, You don't like that. You don't like that result. You don't like throwing an interception to end the game. You don't like throwing for less than 100 yards as a team. But to the exact same token, man, like, I look at that and I feel a little bit like, hey, maybe that's sort of a process that's ongoing. Maybe that's a thing where Peyton Thorne is still getting comfortable in this offense. Hugh Freeze talked about there were times where he didn't get to his hot read in time and just stuff that kind of makes me feel like, hey, this is still a guy who missed spring practice. He missed the most important practices of your entire football season, in my humble opinion, because during spring is when you go through all the day one installs, you kind of walk things through. And he's obviously at a point to where you feel comfortable with him being your starting quarterback in terms of his grasp of the offense. But I just, I wonder, I wonder if maybe with time if he won't maybe uh, settle in a little bit more into this offense. But in terms of the way that he competed yesterday, I I don't think Peyton Thorne has anything to hang his head on. And you don't, again, we're not into moral victories, but just the fire I saw from him, the way that he led that football team, the way those guys rallied around him, I was really impressed by. And I think that's a tremendous direction for them going forward. Like I have more confidence today in Peyton Thorne than I did going into that Georgia game yesterday because of the way that he competed his tail off. Defensively, man, they were in attack mode. Like you held Georgia, who is a physical smash mouth football team, to 107 yards rushing. Like it is very clear now that Auburn is a team that's trending up with Hugh Freeze. Now, obviously, this is one game. You don't want to put too much stock into one performance. 
But I think with you, when you look at the way that they played the gold standard in college football, it's hard to not be encouraged. Going back to what I said when we previewed this game, when we talked about this game during the week, Hugh Freeze is at Auburn for a reason. And the reason isn't because the head coach before him got some promotion and is now in the NFL or took another job because he wanted to. Like Hugh Freeze is there because Auburn wasn't in a good spot. And he's doing all that he can in his first year to get this ship headed in the right direction. If Auburn had lost this game by 30 points, we wouldn't have thought less of Auburn. We would have understood with context that they're a team that's going to have a little bit of a transition period. And eventually we can, you know, view them in a little bit more of a realistic light with better context. But what I saw yesterday, man, if that's a year one football team, that was a year one football team. And I say year one football team in terms of transfers and new staff and new head coach against a head coach that's in his eighth season at Georgia. That's the way it looked. That was, it was a roster and a culture and a depth at Georgia that is just quite frankly ahead of where Auburn's at. Not that Auburn won't get there. We're not excusing anything, but again, I think context is so key here that all those things factored in and you still came up a touchdown short with the football driving to have a chance to tie the football game. Like, I don't think we're reading too much into this. Now, going forward for Auburn, if this is year one and you play Georgia like this, you really have to feel like you have the right guy as your head coach, right? I mean, if this is the direction, again, if this is the trajectory, if this is the starting point, you got to feel like things are trending in the right direction with Hugh Freeze. And they're only going to improve from here. They're only going to get more depth and more talent via the portal and from the recruiting side of things, the high school level, the roster is going to get better. Will they have the exact same roster talent from a stars perspective as Georgia like in the next couple of years? I don't know. They've been building that thing for a while there. That, that thing's got a pretty sturdy base at Georgia, but I think you get a lot closer. I think in a couple of years, that roster matches up a lot better than it did yesterday. No shade to what happened yesterday for Auburn. I think you continue to improve your culture and your standards internally. Not that they have standards or culture issues, but you understand the longer a head coach is there, the more clear the standard becomes across the board, and it's easier to play together and and have, quite frankly, a more mistake-free operation when you all understand the standard and you're all bought into the standard. Now, I would also say that I saw a fair degree of buy-in from Auburn yesterday which was encouraging and tells me a lot about what they think of Hugh Freeze within that football team, within that locker room. The question I have now for Auburn, this was a great showing. Great showing. Looked awesome. I can't say it enough. If if you did believe in moral victories, this is one. We don't. I don't think you do. I promise you Auburn doesn't. But you showed a lot of really good things, and I think you proved where this team can go and what they're capable of. But it's easy to get up for Georgia. It's easy when you're at home and all your friends and all your family wants to come to the Georgia game and it's the Deep South's oldest rivalry. Like, it's easy to play your best on that day and have a little bit of extra fire in your belly for that day. What happens when it's, it's not Georgia on the other side of the field? What happens when it's Ole Miss? Do you still play the same way? Now, Ole Miss... Pretty good based on what we saw yesterday against LSU. They're going to score a lot of football. Uh, are going to score a lot of points, win a lot of football games. But you hear the sentiment of saying, "Can you treat each game the same as this?" Because if you do, I think they're going to have a chance to be really successful and overachieve based on a lot of people's preseason expectations, mine included. Hey, mine included. Now going back to the rest of their games, I think what you did yesterday causes you to view Auburn differently in terms of what they can achieve. Going back to that game against Ole Miss. That game at LSU, that game against Alabama. Going into that game yesterday against Georgia, you're like, hey, I don't know what we got at quarterback. You still don't know what you got at quarterback, but I think you should feel better about what you have at quarterback after yesterday. Hey, the defense, they, you know, I think, I think they're pretty good. They had trouble against AM last week, but like, I don't know. Like, they looked good yesterday to me. Were they perfect? Of course not. Some good things to build on? Yeah, definitely. So going forward for, for Auburn, man, I'm very excited to see how they respond to a performance like this. I think they showed what they're capable of. I think Auburn's got a lot under the hood. And if this is year one, man, get fired up because this Hugh Freeze experience is going to be a lot of fun for the good people of Auburn, Alabama. 
We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Make sure you're subscribed. College football every single day now. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.